though. But does finish him off. Gets two. Gets three. What a what a hit that hits him 65%. And does it go in? It goes in! It goes in! The line's been fine. Oh. 42, 41-1! everyone this is your host for the stream sixer uh from the smash team we are coming up with a we are coming up with a double header with the smash bros play with the smash bros that being um against muskingum and against concordia so first and foremost let's just get some of the Thanks out of the way. Thank you to HyperX for sponsoring us, giving us headphones, mice, keyboards, mouse pads. Um, if you want to help support us and get some nice gear, use the order form or the QR code. Also, thank you to Buy Blue Light, Elgato, Incrediware, Kovox, MSI, and Over the Moon Pub and Pizza. <clears throat> we do have a few oh that's out of date sorry about that there we go that should be more up to date we do have um I think we have not only the double header today, but we also have some Fortnite tomorrow versus the Nace Star League, so please support us then. And if you want to join MC Esports, we are recruiting for Fortnite, League of Legends, Overwatch, Rainbow Six, Rocket League, Smash Bros, and Valorant. And let's see here, we're not quite in just yet. Um, Muskingum, we have played only once before last semester, and we are looking forward to playing with them again. Let's see what the map is pick is going to be. Kalos Pokemon League. Ready? And looks like they are throwing out that Luigi versus Kinku Dinku's hero. Kinku Dinku using that electric spell to get a whopping 25% off, and Luigi's just having to have to combo in order to get that up, but he is getting over half, over double the damage that Kinku Dinku was able to lay on him. Let's see if we're gonna be able to- we don't see that whack, that is unfortunate. That is a one hit KO move from Hero. And we see Luigi going for the combo, trying to go off stage, but just not being able to. That smash attack just not hitting in the ledge, and we're gonna see it. first stock down is from Marietta. But let's see if Pinky Dinku is able to recover his tempo. He did get a great start with the spells. Let's see if he can help capitalize on that. It seems that they're just trying to stay away from one another. They are both melee characters, but um, Hero does have some of the projectiles and a bit more variety than Luigi. But up close, that Luigi's just gonna try to go for that air combo that's gonna go try and true. Keeps failing on that grab, but there it succeeds and there's the down throw. Hero able to get in a great face slash against Luigi. They are now 
neck and neck when it comes to percentage, but that Luigi's just trying to get up that more percent. There's that bounce, which means that no fireballs are going to be able to be thrown. If only... I have not seen that before. We got a bang, and looks like Sue's unfortunately unable to hit because Luigi is on that upper platform. There's that wrap. I think that's a dash attack. There's the other electric spell. Are we going to be able to see King Kudini? Unfortunately, he just keeps staying away from that ledge just too far to not get a hit. But let's see if he's able to get it this time. He goes for the up B, trying to get that extra slash damage in. He's low on MP, but he is getting it back. Let's see if Hero can recover from this. Able to get onto the ledge and... There's the bounce, hopefully trying to get... Going for Zoom, which randomly teleports. I would think that he'd try to go for Acceler... I don't think that was on there. Oh, but there's the other down throw from Luigi, and... Seems like we've got a full charge on one of the spells for Hero, or it was a fail. And again, just trying to stay away from one another. That Luigi getting in those quick aerials, though. But there is the first stock we are going to see off of Muskingum. Is King Kudinka seems to be keeping up that tempo, but that Luigi just hit him right out of it. Let's see if he can get it back. He's getting his electric spells right off. And he's able to shield. They are trading shield blows, but there's the down throw. It looks like Luigi's going for that rapid jab. Trying to go for that ledge guard, and we're gonna see that up B, which is gonna take Kinkudinku's last stock. Luigi wins! Mr. Game & Watch come in with a teal skin this time. So, the Luigi does really like to go for those up-close-and-personal movements. We're gonna go to Hollow Bastion, which is... I would say it's thematically opposite from Kalos, where you have two platforms like way out to the side so that way you can recover easier. You've got one platform in the middle that if you do get trapped on, you can either do some massive damage if you have something that can spear through, or you're going to get trapped up there unless another person's up there with you. Three, two, one, now the Luigi does have to drop one stock. Right. So they're wanting to stay away from each other. The Luigi is feeling out Cheshire's game and watch. Not even wanting- they are paying attention. So it looks like Cheshire is going to try to do some mix-ups with the Judge 9. There's the down air which gets him right into Luigi's combo. Luigi would be susceptible to- oh, but there's that uppercut again. Now both are evened up, but the teams are not. Let's see if Cheshire can get back some rhythm. Able to go through the Luigi's grabs, but just not able to do their own. There's the down air and getting him trapped up there on that platform, which is what Cheshire usually plays for. But Luigi's trying to go for those fast aerials to the grab, to the down air, to the down throw, I mean. 
And then there's that quick jab, which takes off another stock from Game & Watch. Cheshire is gonna really have to pick up the pace if it comes to defeating this Luigi. But there's that down throw again, going for that aerial combo and going for that down throw. And then there's that uppercut with the Luigi losing their stock from that match. Down and out in a minute and a half. Choose your fighter. Corin. We are seeing Ginger Ale's Corin come out. combo of the down throw once again. Ginger Ale is smart about it though and none of the players have lost any percentage and it has been... Are we gonna get up to 30 seconds without any percentage being lost? Oh, we got some lag. Extreme defensiveness from either side trying to make sure that they don't... But there's the first blood drawn by Muskingum with that classic movement that Luigi's trying to go for. Ginger Ale falling for the jump and getting into the other flame. I... And there's the down throw to the up combo. Ginger Ale snapping the ledge. Very smart. Getting able to do that neutral air. Kicking through, but unfortunately that Luigi just shields just in time. Able to get him before he's able to catch him through for the down throw. Both players are not wanting to touch each other. Well, the lead is trying to get in for those melee attacks, but Ginger Ale is trying to stay far away from that, and for good reason with the 76%. The Luigi getting up a massive, massive recovery. And Ginger Ale going for that spike but just unable to and there's the uppercut trying to go for the chomp but just unfortunately getting back into that down throw air combo and getting hit by that fireball but that's probably trying to not shield so that it doesn't shield other moves a neck and neck battle but it looks like Luigi's just able to get those quicker recoveries and the hyper aggression that the Luigi has is just really hard for anyone to get in there able to recover off of that incredible but there's the back throw able to recover once again and getting that slashing Let's see if Ginger Ale is able to get off another stock. Ginger Ale has him at a kill percentage if she's just able to get that sweet spot. Trying to shield and going for that immediate down throw. Unable to get that sweet spot. Trying to go for the kick and retreating back. Avoiding the jab, avoiding the grab and throw. Ginger Ale is not wanting anything to do with this Luigi. But it seems like even though Corrin does have the superior, um... This Luigi rocket, unable to do get that two frame and kicking away, avoiding that Luigi. 
picking him up, are they gonna be able to get another stock off? Still unable to get that two frame. And the projectile versus projectile moveset. Getting hit by that. And getting... Ginger Ale's able to recover once again, but there's the, another up B from the Luigi. Still trying to get that kill with the up B. There's the kick. Is Ginger Ale going to be able to recover? They do! But there's that up B once again. Still in the game, though. Still in the game. Trying to go for a counter for the first time in this game. Getting a successful kickoff due to the smaller shield. Trying to go for that two-frame, but just not able to get it. However, does avoid the up B. And able to get that sweet spot off. There we go, neutral air. But that rapid jab with that high of a percentage is going to lead to Marietta losing the first game. So that was the first match, and that Luigi absolutely brutal in the actions, I would say. It is very, very difficult to try to get in. And... from what I would think would be good against it, would be trying to get a good projectile person in. The Luigi does also have that down throw and that grab is just obnoxious, just like Samus's. But let's see if MC is able to take what they dealt with and see if they're able to learn and turn it around. Some nice chill movement. Some nice chill music. Wouldn't DDD been a better matchup against Luigi? Well, we can. I don't know. The Luigi does like to get up close and personal, and DDD does have that weakness with the eyes, but the suck would be pretty strong against it.
We are seeing the puff. We have seen the puff last time we faced Machinum, and they are quite scary. I'm gonna be honest. Three, two, one, go! They are going to go right into it. Um, instead of going for like a snooze, they go for a new goal for balance. Um, but Jigglypuff is getting that first blood off. And there's the bounce running out. Hero is unable to just get up there, but does get blood off due to the um, up the, the tornadoes there, not a lot of people realize, do in fact do damage. But that Jigglypuff just trying to employ the wall of death, however, in doing so, saved Kinku Dinku and allowed him to get up higher. Now, Jigglypuff really is enjoying a lot of aerials, but because of that, it is going to take the first stall off of Marietta College. We are going to see Hiro try to employ some of the same tactics, but unfortunately just unable to continue juggling the Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is really hard to juggle due to the floatiness, but keeping them in the air might be a good thing if this Jigglypuff is using a lot of the short hops. And even though Jigglypuff is a featherweight, due to the floatiness, I would say Jigglypuff is harder to kill. But we are going to see the first kill from a... Meteor Smash. So it's evened up with a little bit of damage on Marietta. Is Kinku Dinku going to be able to keep the pressure on Jigglypuff? Keeping control of center stage, I would say, is the biggest that he can do right now. The Jigglypuff doesn't seem to want to go away from it. In fact, when even when they float, they float above center stage, as we see right here. So if Kinku Dinku is a Kinku Dinku goes for the Kamikaze and does some great damage against the Jigglypuff, but are they going to be able to let it last? Slashing the Jigglypuff. Let's see if they can keep up that juggle. Barely missing that electric the electric spell. Really wants to try to go for that though. The Jigglypuff just not doing too much, wanting to bait Kinku Dinku, I'm guessing, and taking, trying to take control of center stage, once again going from the corner, trying to go for the snooze and as a ledge guard, but the Jigglypuff is just going to go right over that. Going for that throw, unfortunately unable to get a charge off, and not able to jump over the rollout. Unfortunately, unable to get that crackle slash off because Jigglypuff just floats up too high. Let's see Kinku Dinku take off at least one more stop, please. Game. But that is going to be game. Let's see who they want to send in next. Now this this person is sending out a lot of aerials, so let's see if we can get someone who does well with anti-aerial. They also have to get up close and personal because um, Jigglypuff literally has no projectiles. We're gonna see Ginger Ale come in and are we gonna hear a music change? No, they're gonna stay with the chill music. That's that's fine. Suppose they are waiting on Muskingum to choose the map bands so they can do their pick. So we will be here for a bit. Seems like they've already chosen their bands. We are going Smashville, and I 
heard ginger ale through the wall, so I'm guessing that it's either going to be great, or it's going to be as, uh, as ginger ale said it, hell. I think that's what she said. There's a one stop off of the Jigglypuff. You ready for this? The Jigglypuff is once again trying to go for control of that center stage again. But also seeming to play around the edge now. Getting a bit of paralysis off. And Ginger Ale is waiting for that Jigglypuff to come over to do some damage, which is a really smart move on her part. But that Jigglypuff is going to get off those aerials, which are going to rack up a lot of damage. And there goes the... That's a wall of death strategy. Which we've run into a Jigglypuff from Miss Gingham using... using it before. I would not be surprised if it was the same. Going up for all of those aerials. But we're gonna see a kick from Ginger Ale. It's going to take off the other st another stock of the Jigglypuff, so it's down to its final stock. Are we gonna be able to see Ginger Ale come back and continue? Going for those jabs. Trying to counter, but just not getting it in time. But there's the counter from Corrin. And able to get the recovery and a little bit of damage off the recovery. And going for that up smash. Great combination from Ginger Ale. And able to just jump over that smash attack. Trying to go for that Dragon Chomp, but Jigglypuff's just going to keep floating around. Spot dodging that smash attack once again, and able to get off that spike and kick. Paralysis to that dash attack. Jigglypuff finally shields that projectile, but there's a Dragon Chomp. Unfortunately, Jigglypuff is not going to have a shield break from that. There's a down air from Ginger Ale going for a ledge guard with the projectile. Jigglypuff is at high enough percentage to be killed. Are we going to see another stock off of this puff before we get to our last player? Jigglypuff down to zero, leaving Warren with one stock. So my guess with Miss Kingdom is that they, if the Jigglypuff player is not one and the same with the Luigi player, we are going to see that Luigi come out. And if the Luigi player is the same as the Puff player, I don't know. We are getting a change in the music. Electroplankton. <laughs> Electroplankton is a very, very quiet song to so be playing. They have two Jigglypuff on their team. That's some. Um, 
I was not expecting this. Going for Smashville yet again. Yeah, the second Jigglypuff is on. I believe that this is the one. Because this is the exact skin. Three, two, one, Horn will go! have to drop two stocks. Ah! Going first for the fast fall, yeah! and then second for the down air. Your fate is clear. And we're gonna see this Jigglypuff use a lot more shielding. And they're the knockup in the air, trying to go for the unable to just get over with the rest, which is a one hit KO move. So, um, seems like we're gonna get a uh, skilled rest player here, which can be funny, but also very, very scary because if you get rest, you don't come back from that. It is just like a non-shielded. We are going to see a comeback from Cheshire's Bowser. We have not seen that in quite a long time. I think not since 2022. Or 2023. It could have been the 2023. But Bowser being played here is going to be incredibly interesting because we are used to seeing that Game & Watch. Or are we going to see a different- Choose your fighter! Mr. Game & Watch! Mr. Game & Watch. Have me for a moment. I really thought that we were going to see a return of Bowser, which would make sense with a heavy character versus the featherweight character, and while not as um, able to kill you in three hits as C. Stoffel's Ganondorf, there is a reason why Bowser packs a punch when it comes to his final smash. Yeah, on small battlefield, they don't need to have any stocks drop, so they're going right into the fight. They are avoiding each other. They want to get off some moves. We are going to see the first move done by Jigglypuff, but Jigglypuff did take some damage from Mr. Game and & Watch, and we are going to see Cheshire try to continue that. And there's the rest from the Jigglypuff. And we're gonna try to see... Bomb was nullified by one of Jigglypuff's aerials, and Jigglypuff is just trying to go for that rest again. And there's the smash attack from Cheshire, able to get off a stop from this Jigglypuff. Unfortunately, unable to do it again as the rest was interrupted by the up air. No, not the upper. Let's go for another smash attack. Unfortunately, just not enough damage to get that Jigglypuff just off the stage. But we are going to see more moves from both. Now they are both featherweight characters, so they are going to have a big gap between them when it comes to the moves. And there's another rest. And unfortunately, unable to capitalize off it. 
that Jigglypuff is doing some really smart shielding. But just running into the bomb at the last moment. The back air getting some damage off. But there is that final rest. That is going to be our game one. I was not expecting the back-to-back -back Jigglypuff, nor the fact that one was going to just immediately do rest strategies. That is really... <laughs> it's a very scary thing to be on the other end of. Um, don't go away. We do have a another Smash mat. Smash match coming up against Concordia, so we hope to see you there.